Welcome to Marketecture, where you can get smart fast with in-depth interviews of leading technology vendors. I'm Ari Papero. Today, I'm joined by Tassos Argios from Action IQ. The CDP space is crowded, complicated, a lot of vendors claiming that all the other vendors don't know what they're talking about. Uh, so can you educate our audience as to how, how Action IQ is different and maybe what subsector it's in or what's its... What's its uh, you know differentiation? Yeah, so so I think as I started um, I, I started maybe explaining um, the the landscape and then I got a bit distracted. But um, three three main categories of CDPs in my mind, right? There's CDPs that are more on the web or mobile uh, customer data infrastructure. Their focus is in capturing that event from the website or the mobile app, right? And then routing it. Um, these are the CDIs, and then there's CDPs whose focus is to build this custom data mart, essentially, um, with some identity resolution, right? And they're more like uh, data integration CDPs, I call them. Okay. Our focus, um, I mean, we do identity resolution, but our, our main focus is on data activation, which means we sit on top of data warehouses, and then we provide an interface to the business to access the data in the data warehouse, could be not just one place, right? Multiple places in the enterprise, do audiencing, do journeys, drive activation, measure, and orchestrate the actions across all the different vendors that drive the customer experience. Um, and with composable CDP in the last two years, um, we have been able to leverage the data warehouse for directly for processing and storage of customer data, right? So if you already have a Databricks or a Snowflake or a Teradata it has a lot of customer data in it, you can just point Action IQ to it, and then we don't have to copy the data in order right. to make use of that data. That's a big, big change and a big advantage that the industry has been able to take advantage of. That's right, and, and in our case, we maintain our previous architect capabilities, I would say, that you can actually connect some data in Action IQ. We call this hybrid compute, meaning some of the data can live in your data warehouse in the cloud and some of the data can live in Action IQ. Totally up to the customer, right, how, how that architecture looks like. So the data that may be in Databricks or Snowflake, um, it's all there, right, and we can access it in place, but then there may be other data that's not yet there that we can help connect. So in a lot of our deployments these days, um, we'll access the data directly through the composable model into the data warehouse, but there's always a long tail of data that we still have to connect. Um, so that's kind of the best of both worlds, right? And it's totally up to the customer what they want to do composable, what they want to do bundled, and how they want to combine the two together. Um, it's also completely transparent to the end user. Um, and then you have you know, some newer folks um, it's a reverse CTL, I guess, category, right? And mm -hmm. in my mind, reverse CTL is what, what you would get if you took Action IQ with a composable only deployment format, right? Only able to access data warehouse data, not hybrid. And you remove most of our functionality. Right. Then you get a reverse CTL model, right? So you can access the data warehouse data and you can push that data to endpoints. But then what can you do with the data in the platform itself? Uh, those platforms are, they're very new, right? They're much newer than we are, so their, their functionality, the capabilities are quite limited. Um, you know, they started saying that CDPs are useless and they're dead, and now <laughs> they want to say they're a better CDP because they're composable. Um, but we, we're natively composable now too, right? So, so I think we have hit parity on that capability right. the past couple of years. Yeah, I think the criticism of reverse ETL is that um, you end up having to build all the things the CDP has because just taking your data out of your data warehouse and shoving it somewhere um, might not be, you know, compliant with your privacy policies or, um, you know, a million different things that you have to consider. Exactly, yeah. I mean, I mean the whole point of the CDP was not just to to feed with data, the applications with data. That is part of the value, mm -hmm. right? And, and, and compared to having nothing at all, having a reverse CTL platform is better than nothing. Um, but the whole point of having a CDP is also to orchestrate. It means that there's one place, one brain, that, that for every single customer of yours understand how is that customer getting 
access and communicate it through all these different vendors that you have, right? So the concept of orchestration right. is very important. Now, if all you're doing is pushing data to the to five or six different vendors, right? Maybe you have a web personalization vendor, an email vendor, your call center, decisioning vendor. If all you're doing is feeding those vendors with data, you don't get orchestration. Mm -hmm. And every vendor still does communications to the same customer at the end of the day, right? In a completely ad hoc way. So if you want to be more targeted, if you want to be more orchestrated, if you want to have journeys that span different channels, right? And being able to measure the impact of your actions across different channels to your customers, you need a lot more than what a diversity of platform can offer. Right. 